Welcome in, Buck fans. Appreciate you finding us. Welcome to our free agency edition of the No Quarter Given podcast as part of the BuckPower.com podcast network. I am your host, Jason, here in Tampa, along with my co-host and tag team partner, one Peter Blake. Welcome in, Peter. What's going on, buddy? How you doing? I'm doing well. Good thing is free agency has finally started. The new league year is underway. And for the good news, we're not, we're not talking about guys that the Bucks are having to just get rid of. The Bucks did get rid of a few guys and restructured some contracts, but they've also made a couple of additions. They brought back a couple of guys that were free agents. So lots of good news on that front. So we're going to get into all that. And then we're going to talk about uh, some other stuff going on around the division. The, the other teams in the division have made some moves that have been pr- pretty interesting. So let's get right into it. Free agency, again, has started. Uh, as you know, in the last month or so, the Bucks had made it known publicly they were going to re- they were going to let go of uh, Donovan Smith, Leonard Fournette, Cam Brait. Those things all happen. Um, we did lose uh, Rock uh, Roaches Nunez Roaches to the New York Giants. Was a pending free agent, but the Bucks did re-sign. We're going to give you a list of neat, and several of these were in the last twenty four to forty eight hours. They brought back Jamel Dean. What would you think of Jamel Dean coming back? Shocking, because I thought he was done. But again, it goes back to you know doubting this front office at the end of the day, right? I mean, they continue to make things happen. I mean, it's like David Blaine over there. I mean, there's magic. You know, Jamel Dean was supposed to get seventeen, eighteen million dollars. That was the market. Patrick Peterson gets signed by the Steelers, and then all of a sudden, about ten or fifteen minutes later, Dean is now re-signed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Four years, $52 million, $13 million a year. You convince one of the top corners in the market to take less money. That's amazing. And now the Bucks have Carlton Davis on one side and Jamel Dean on the other. So great job by, once again, Jason Light, Mike Greenberg. Uh, Spytech, John Spytech. John Spytech, Miss Davidson over there. Uh, they're just getting it done, man, and everybody thinking they're going to lose and have all these losses. And I've kind of said this on my show. It's not necessarily a bad thing to lose some of these free agents because yeah. you were an eight-win team. So it's to be expected. You need some new blood. You need new talent. But you also got to sign your own guys, and they were able to do that this week. And remember, Buck fans, the Bucks came into kind of a, a week or so back. They were $55 million over the cap. With the Tom Brady retirement, with some of the dead money that's accumulating, they were so were fifty five million. A lot of restructures throughout the you know the older guys, Jensen, Evans, Godwin. You know they restructured a lot of deals in order to create some cap space. They traded Shaq Mason to the Houston Texans here in the last day or so to create a little more cap space. So they did the necessary things to allow them to go sign Jamel Dean, to allow them to bring back Aaron Stinney to allow them to re-sign Anthony Nelson, who they've done in the last couple of days. And the big move outside of Jamel Dean was there. They were able to retain Levante David, a key element in the franchise, just PR wise, still a really good player, a great job by them coming to terms one year deal for about seven or seven, between seven and $8 million. Your thoughts. I mean, just amazing work uh, by, once again, that Bucks front office because uh, you would assume that David wanted to go somewhere else. A lot of Bucks fans were upset and worried that he was in a test free agency and there was a possibility he'd go to the Miami Dolphins or the Buffalo Bills and you get him back in the fold. He's one of the best all-time Bucks of all time. He also makes everybody else around him better, namely a Devin White. So who wanted to see him go to another team like Warren Sapp went – to the Raiders who wanted to see him go to another team like John Lynch went to the Broncos. Nobody wants to see that uh, at the end of the day. So you get him back in the fold and all Bucks fans are happy and rejoicing at this point. And I think a big part of this decision was one, I think his relationship with Derek Brooks helped that scenario. Obviously we know Derek played his entire career here, similar position. I think Levante smartly realized Kind of at he's at what stage of the career he's at. He can be a very much of a mentor to the defense. Gonna have a lot of younger guys playing, and I think he knows that post career, if he plays the entire career in Tampa Bay, he'll be a Buck legend. Lots of other things, opportunities will present itself by playing his entire career with one organization. I'm sure he could have gone to a place like San Francisco or Philadelphia or Kansas City to try to chase a ring. And not that the Bucks potentially couldn't be a contender in a couple of years, but we don't know where he'll be in two years, but I give him a lot of credit for, for, for 
for understanding where he's at in his career and, and doing the right thing for the long term, not just today. Yeah, I mean, he's not the same Levante David he was, you know, five years ago, but he's still pretty good. And again, he, he brings out the best in Devin White. And if Devin White wants to earn an extension, I would rather have Levante David back there instead of a young player at the end of the day. Going back to Shaq Mason, you trade him for a six-round pick. Now the Bucks got three six-round draft picks. They traded for Mason last year and only had to give up a fifth round. Furthermore, you cut $5 million. You take yep. Aaron Stinney. You save that money, and you pay him $2.5 million. And to tell you the truth, when Stinney was healthy, which, again, he's coming off that injury last year that he suffered in the preseason game, which was disappointing in itself. But when Stinney was healthy, he didn't miss a beat when Alex Kappa went out in that Super Bowl year. So a very smart signing by that front office, by the way. They want to get younger at that position. They have players in-house. They want to move possibly uh, Gedecki to the right tackle. I think they want to go with – uh, Hansy there. Let's get into the offensive. Let's get into the offensive line. We've yeah. talked about on the last podcast. If you if you missed this, if you missed the last one, check it out because we were me, Peter, and I told you what we, we thought was going to happen with the offensive line, and almost every one of them have come to fruition. We think Tristan Wirfs is going to left tackle. All indications are he will. We told you Donovan Smith probably gone. We told you Hansy probably to guard with Leverett. We told you Gedicky going to right tackle. And we also think that, again, the combination of Hainsey, Leverett, and Stinney, two out of those three could fill the guard spots pretty adequately, I think. I think probably Leverett and maybe Stinney are probably the leaders in the clubhouse, but Hainsey's a perfect swing guy, can play all three positions. He played center last year. Jensen's back. If Gedeke can work out at right tackle, this Bucks offensive line could be a, more than just average. Agree, and again, they got those in-house candidates that can play guard, and I think that's what they saw last year with uh, Hinzi. Uh, they are at the right. And level. cheap and relatively yes. inexpensive. Yes, absolutely. Did you watch the Pat McAfee show this week and see him working with AQ Shipley? I mean, the I guy, did not. The guy is uh, squatting. I mean, he looks strong at the point of attack. I get it. It's just to show he's working out, but he's working on his craft in the offseason. You know, unlike some players out there, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, um, uh, left <laughs> Nick Leverett. I mean, you could see him going there. I mean, they could also draft somebody. But at the end of yep. the day, they didn't pigeonhole themselves where, you know what, uh, they don't have depth. They don't have, you know, enough guys to, to cover those holes. Like, offensive line is not a need, in my opinion. Could they go with the left tackle? And They're going to draft somebody. It may not right. be in the first round. They're right. going to draft somebody second or third round, I think. And that's what we've seen from Jason Light. We've seen that last year with the drafting of Gedeke in the second round. We've seen that with him getting Donovan Smith. What was Donovan Smith? A second round pick also? Yep. Uh, Ali Marpet, a third round pick at the end of the day. So Light likes to do that, say that three times. And I think it makes lots of sense because you never know when you're going to have that major injury, which the Bucks suffered. And at the end of the day, with all that being said, you're going to get back a 100% knock on wood Ryan Jensen Back right. in the fold, that is huge for this offensive line. I think they're a lot better off without Donovan Smith. It's addition by subtraction. And I also think you're right, Jason Powers, my tag team partner of the world. You move worse to the left side. It's much easier to draft a right tackle than put somebody right away to cover that uh, quarterback's blind side. Whatever quarterback that is, it's going to be a lot tougher position to draft for a left tackle. I, I think you move worse to the left tackle spot. You draft a right tackle, or you go with your in-house option there with Gedeke. Because you're gonna, you're in the next year, if not sooner, between now and probably training camp, you're gonna give Worfs an extension, and you don't want to be paying a guy twenty million dollars to play right tackle. He's he's the most athletic guy we got. He's the most skilled offensive lineman tackle we have. You put him on the left side for the next seven or eight years, ten years, and you're gonna pay him twenty million dollars, and he he probably goes to the Hall of Fame. To be honest with you. Uh, I mean, if he continues the career he continues with, absolutely. No injuries. Again, knock on wood because the way he plays and people saying, well, I don't know if he can handle that. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. He came in in his rookie year in that Super Bowl year. He was the rookie right tackle that basically protected Tom Brady. Right. In his first game went against Cam Jordan and absolutely shut him out. Now, he had his moments, but overall pressure and sacks, he was nailed. So why would you expect anything less from Tristan Wirfs. He's probably not only the best offensive lineman on this team, but one of the best young offensive linemen yep. in the whole entire league. And he absolutely deserves to get paid. And he's going to get paid.
Absolutely. All right, let's go to the uh, the quarterback situation. Obviously, that's the big the, been the big talking point the last week or so. What will the Bucks do at quarterback? Will they bring in somebody to compete with Kyle Trask? Will they have done that? I don't know if this. I don't know if it's been signed yet, but all the it reports are that Baker Mayfield one year deal for up to eight million dollars. You know, um, you know, different opinions on Baker Mayfield. I don't love personally love the move. I don't think Baker will be a great teammate if he doesn't win the job as the backup. I think this year you definitely want to know can Kyle Trash play or not. I think to me that's the num- one of the top priorities on the on the long term goal of this year is figure out if he can play or not, which means you got to give him an opportunity to start in meaningful games, whether it's the first four, five, six weeks of the year, see what he can do or whatever, unless Baker Mayfield just completely blows him out of the water in training camp. If it's anywhere close to being even, to me, Kyle Trask has to be the starter. And I don't think it's even because basically this coaching staff and this organization has told you that I don't believe they have enough confidence in Trask. Uh, they're going with Baker Mayfield. They're paying him upwards of 8.5. It's been said that it's going to be four. Incentive with, uh, laden. Right, $4 million in incentives. And I think also it's Dave Canales, right? I mean, but Mayfield should definitely have an advantage. He worked in that Rams system. Do you think the new offensive coordinator is going to have some of those principles because he is from the Sean uh, McVay coaching tree? Uh, you look at his numbers last year. Uh, 10 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, but with the Rams, 4 touchdowns, 2 interceptions. And I kind of think Canales pictures or envisions, if you will, turning around Mayfield much like he did last year with Geno Smith. Remember, Smith was a journeyman quarterback. He turns him into a pro bowler. Who's to say you can't do that with Baker Mayfield? I get it. 102 touchdowns all-time, 64 interceptions, his best year in 2020, 26-8. I think a lot of Bucks fans in this offense would take 26 and 8 at the end of the day. That's the question mark. Is he a great teammate? Can he be a great leader? Does he have the maturity? Is he over that stuff? This is the best collection of talent and weapons he's ever had. Let's see how it rolls. What are your thoughts on Dave Canales, new offensive coordinator, comes over from Seattle, the quarterback coach. You mentioned the Sean McVay ties. He's never called plays before, though. That's the one knock on him. Um Seems to be philosophically more in line with Bowles, wants to run the ball more. I think you're going to see a much more balanced attack. Your thoughts, Dave Canales? A smart guy. I mean, he started out coaching when he was 28 years old. He's been coaching in the league for 13 years under Pete Carroll. I mean, what better coach can he learn under at the end of the day? He was a wide receiving coach. Not the best offensive mind in the world, though. you got to admit that with Pete Carroll. True, but here's the thing. Todd Bowles is going to be more balanced, right? The running game was last in the National Football League last year. They averaged 4.8 yards. That's exactly what you're trying to do. No matter what quarterback it is, you want to be more balanced, and that's the perfect offensive coordinator. And then on top of it, he was able, uh, you know, to work with, uh, you know, the coaching tree there with Sean McVay and the Rams and and, and develop quarterbacks. So, yes, the big-time question mark is, can that translate over to calling plays? Because he hasn't done that since high school. Yep. So it's a big time risk, but the guy seems like he has a plan. Great press conference, very intelligent, very articulate. And it certainly seems like uh, he wanted Baker Mayfield today. Uh, he got his wish, and we'll see what he could do with Kyle Trask because I don't think Trask is out of it. And you have to simplify this playbook because you go back to Clyde Christensen and his comments about Trask in general, how he was a deliberate learner, scale down this playbook, make it easy for Kyle Trask, and let's see this quarterback competition if it takes hold. And if it doesn't, then basically you know that Trask is not the guy. And you're going to be drafting somebody next year most likely. Unless Baker has a great year. Right. I mean, and again, it's not far-fetched because it certainly seems like the Bucs are not ready to tank. They're not ready to rebuild. Why would you? Todd Bowles is going to be on the hot seat. He finally got – he has his coaching staff. Um, So i rather see a – you know, not a rebuild here, but i rather see them with eight to ten wins. I don't know if it's possible because they still got some holes on defense, but that NFC South is kind of wide open, although, you know, the Saints signing Derek Carr, they seem like they're in the driver's seat at this juncture. Let's talk defense. Let's go to the defense. Obviously, the to me, the biggest weakness going into this offseason on defense is going to be the pass rush. We don't know Shaq Barrett's status with coming off the Achilles. Obviously, um, you know, Shoy- JTS did not live up to expectations in year two. Critical year for him. 
Um, you have you, you didn't have a lot of you didn't have a lot of pass rush. We we do re-sign Anthony Nelson. He's shown flashes. Uh, Vita Vea's had a good year, but again, do you sign William Golston? Do you need somebody next to Vea to help occupy some of the thing? And you got to find a pass rusher in addition to JTS and Shaq Barrett, whether it's through the draft or free agency. Agree. I think that's probably the biggest need in this draft coming up at number 19. I think that's why you trade down at the end of the day, unless there is a pass rushing specialist on the board that you can't pass up because you need players not only at the defensive tackle position because all you got right now is what? Vita Vea uh, and, and who else? You got Logan Hall. Right. Those are your two defensive tackles, and Logan Hall needs to get stronger at the point of attack. It's already been talked about. He wasn't in the best physical shape to handle the NFL rigors. With that being said, you're exactly right. Shaq Barrett coming off a major injury. What's going to be the impact of him? JTS, you don't know, lots of potential, but he hasn't been able to do it. You re-sign Nelson, who's one of the most improved players on this team with 10 sacks here the last two years. Of course, former fourth-round pick out of Iowa. So lots of questions there on the defense. And you know, I think Golston's a key. I think you bring Golston back. He's a great locker room guy. He's a great rotational guy. He won't cost a ton of money. Great in the community. Is a good buck off the field. So I think he's a guy that, again, another guy that could potentially retire as a Buccaneer. I definitely think you bring him back. Yeah, I definitely think you bring him back. And being a defensive-minded coach, I would not be surprised that they do trade down and accumulate some draft capital that you use both of those picks either at the defensive tackle or, again, the edge rushing position. And remember, you know, what is this team's safety? I mean, you got Antoine Winfield Jr. Do they re-sign a Logan Ryan? I mean, lots of questions to be answered here coming up in this NFL draft because I don't think you're going to be able to do any more work in the free agency, but who knows? You know, maybe they got some money underneath the mattress where they're they're able to pay some people. I would not be surprised because, once again, that front office is like David Blaine. It's magic. One thing to remember, Buck fans, you have to allot about probably five to six million dollars to sign your draft pick. So that eats into your cap. So you have whatever the number is today, you got to add five more million to be able to fit in all your draft picks. So you can't spend all your money on free agents and not have any draft money. You have to have money to pay your draft picks. An interesting name that got released today that potentially on a one-year deal. A lot of potential. He's had some moments. What do you think of Jadavion Clowney? Could cost a cheap. lot of money. He is cheap, but I don't know if he's that cheap. I, I still think he wants a lot of money. I mean, that would be that would be a good pickup, right? Is he a locker room guy? He's been kind of a nuisance uh, yep. on top of it. He wants to be paid like a top pass rusher. I don't think he's necessarily that. I think he's more of a rotational guy. The potential okay. is there when he wants to play. He can be a top rushing pass uh, specialist in this league, but he's not always like that. He's the guy that makes the big play in the Michigan game at the Outback Bowl, and he's also the guy that has three and a half sacks where you question yeah. well, effort, you effort. It's effort. It's not there. Can Todd Bowles and, and this defensive coaching staff get enough out of him? I don't know if he's a locker room guy. I don't know if he's a fit, but it's an interesting name to throw out there. That's for sure. Yep. Um. All right, so – contract extension wise on defense do you do you make Devin White play it out what do you do with Antoine Winfield do you make him play it out one more year both of them are potential free agents next year you probably don't want to have both of them lingering one of one of the two I think you probably sign Winfield before you sign Devin White it's going to be a little cheaper you know I think I think Devin White I think he thinks he's in the 20 million dollar a year range I'm not sure about that I could see I could very easily see the Bucks franchise tagging Devin next year if you can get Winfield under contract here between now and the end of next year I agree I think Winfield Jr. Uh, deserves it he's earned it you look at the safety market is getting up there with Jesse Bates signing with the Atlanta Falcons so I would definitely take care of him and I got to see more out of Devin White we keep on talking about it over and over again at nauseum on no quarter given on the Buck Power podcast network he's got to get more consistent he's got to take better angles when he's tackling he's got to get better in coverage he's got to show the effort right we're talking about maybe not as bad as Jadavian Clowney but he's got to have that effort at all times and I get it he went through some personal things with losing his father but he's got to get more consistent. If he wants to be the defensive leader of this team, the next Levante David, the next Derek Brooks, and he yep. has the potential to be that. We've seen that before. 
Can we see it again? He's got to do it in, in order to earn that next contract from this organization. No doubt about it. All right, you listen to the No, no Quarter Given podcast. I'm Jason along with Peter. We're yeah. part of the Buck.com, BuckPower.com podcast network for all your Buck detail information, statistics, history, audio, video. Definitely go to BuckPower.com and our buddy Paul Stewart for doing all the great work he does. Happy maintaining. Birthday, Paul. Yes. I saw that today. Happy birthday, Mr. Stewart. Hope your golf game is well over in, uh, I don't know if it's chilly, rainy, or whatever it is in England, the weather these days. But I know he likes, he's out there playing golf, no matter what the weather is. But happy birthday, Paul Stewart. Appreciate you, uh, all all the hard work you do. A couple more offensive questions, we'll, and we'll get us out of here. I'm going to give you, offensively, no Leonard Fournette. Rashad White's probably going to be the lead back. Zeke Elliott was released today by the Cowboys. Is he a guy that you bring in? Great short yardage, goal line kind of guy, really good in pass protection. You could probably get him for two and a half, three million bucks a year, I would guess. Would he be a good fit in the Tampa Bay backfield? I think he would. Uh, it makes sense because you connect the dots. Of course, the new running back coach is Skip Pete. Uh, you know, Pete seems to have a relationship with him. On top of it, he didn't fumble last year. You're exactly right. His yards per a carry have gone down ever since he got the new contract. He is 27 years old. There is a lot of miles on those tires, so I guess it would consider Jason Powers. How much is it going to cost? Right. And does he want to be the starter? Because he's not going to be the starting running back here, in my opinion. It's going to be Rashard White. But as a second, as a short yardage guy, as a guy that can you can keep there. Pass protection. Out, yes, I think that would be a fit. I got you. I, I agree. I think that could be a, a a value signing, and it may not happen for another month or so. It may be an after the draft situation where you see which you, if you've drafted anybody, maybe somebody falls to you in the draft that you really like, and then out. Or if somebody doesn't fall to you, maybe you draft sign them after the draft, things like that. So, um, all right. Last thing we'll get we'll be done. Let's go around the division a little bit. A couple of the things that the people in the division have done. Let's start with New Orleans. Obviously, the big move to get Derek Carr. They they re-signed Jameis Winston. They they just today we're, and we're we're taping this on Wednesday night. They bring in Jamal Williams from Detroit. You know, uh, they you know the issues with Alvin Kamara potentially. I think that's a pretty good signing by the Saints. Your thoughts on what the Saints have done? Uh, they they've knocked it out of the park. I mean, they're uh, much stronger on offense. I mean, right now, probably the best quarterback in the division. Even though his record is sixty three and seventy nine, he's never had. A yep. consistent defense, never had a consistent system. He's going to get that opportunity. You have the weapons around him. And then you get Jamal Williams, who had a career year last year. I'm surprised the Lions didn't sign him. They went with David Montgomery instead, but over 1,000 yards. Led the league with rusting touchdowns. Yep. So the, they're, they're getting ready to try to win this division. It's going to be a lot tougher. All these teams in the division at this point got better. And I think they're anticipating Alvin Kamar getting suspended for a period of time from the NFL. Yep. So I think that's – and, again, that's a good move. you got to have two running backs anyway, and he's kind of the bruiser, and Kamara's kind of the the finesse guy and the, and the scat back kind of guy. So I think that's a good move. Carolina, they trade up to the number one pick in the draft. They're obviously most likely going to go quarterback. There has been some rumblings they might trade back a little bit, maybe back down to three or four to the Colts, or who knows. But most likely they're taking a quarterback at, at one um, – Young quarterback, they signed Andy Dalton to be the backup, so we know that's kind of their insurance policy. I know you and you and I off the air talked about Dalton potentially coming to Tampa. They also, you know, they as part of the trade, they got rid of DJ Moore, but they brought in Miles Sanders as their new running back, and they brought in Hayden Hurst at tight end. And your thoughts on the Carolina Panthers? I mean, no matter what quarterback they get in there, whether it's Andy Dalton or, you know, Howdy Doody, because that's what I think of when I think of Andy Dalton. I mean, <laughs> who's he throwing Don't to? Don't be messing with the red rifle, man. Oh, I got red oh, I got red hair too, man. That's your red rifle right here, buddy. <laughs> uh, you, you know, for me, it, it looks like Carolina's all in here. I mean, they're going to go with the quarterback. Now, who's it going to be? Is it going to be Bryce Young? Is it going to be C.J. Stroud? And for me, the reason why they made that trade in the first place, and I continue to say this, I don't think they're going to draft him at number one, but Anthony Richardson is going to be their pick. For some reason, I'm thinking that's going to be their pick. Maybe it's a smoke screen. I think they're going to try to trade down with the Colts. The four. They're going to try to trade down. They get Anthony Richardson. They can justify it. They can pick up more draft capital. That is a boom or bust uh, yep, yep. project, if you will. 
55% completion percentage, but what Frank Reich sees is all the tools, all the potential. He feels like he can turn him around, much like Josh Cam Allen. Newton, new right. version of Cam Newton. Right, but can he be accurate? Can he? Right. Because he can make all the throws. He can do all that. Can he do it consistently? I think that's where Carolina is going at the end of the day. They're not trying to win anything right now, but they're trying to build. They're doing the rebuilding, and I think they're going to go with the – a prospect like Richardson. I could be wrong. They could go with C.J. Stroud, but if they trade out of that number one spot, there's no way Stroud or Young is on the board at the end of the day. It's going to be... Let me ask you this. Yes. If for some way, somehow, Will Levis or Anthony Richardson fall to 19, do you draft them? No. I can't I can't do it. As much as I uh, like the potential with both of those guys, I, it's not enough for me. I still think you go into next year if you're not doing well. You don't have a great team. Maybe you have the opportunity to get the kid from North Carolina in a May or your – Caleb Williams from USC. USC. But you absolutely have to stink or you're going to yeah. have to trade a haul – Yes. Like Carolina did to Chicago. Look what they got. You know, number one wide receiver, uh, two first round picks, you know, a couple second round picks. Yep. Right. You know, I mean, a lot. You got to give up a lot. So I don't know. Where are you at on that? I mean, Richardson. For I mean, if Richardson was there at 19, I would take him at 19. Right. Yeah, because that's a that's a you know I would definitely Basically, or Kyle Trask is done at that point. You've admitted that you've turned the page on Trask as a or Baker player. Mayfield might be done too. Right. Well, both of them, both of them at the end of the day. But you have the luxury at the end of the day, Jason Powers. Yep. If Anthony Richardson is it there at nineteen, you could also trade out of that spot, get somebody to come up there and give you possibly right. a first round pick next year and some draft capital. That's where I'm looking, either him or Hendon Hooker. If there's a quarterback on the second board, round, you or, or or the Bucks could theoretically. A lot of times, you see these teams trade to the back end of the first round because you get that fifth year with the quarterback. Correct. Potentially at thirty one or thirty two, if the Bucks really loved a guy like Hendon Hooker, and you really thought he was worth it, you could potentially draft up him, trade back into the first round at the end of the first round, and get a guy like that. Well, see, I see more of what you're saying, but I think there's a team that's going to get desperate if there's yes. a quarterback on the board like Hooker at nineteen. Then they start calling you, and you have to take that call because they're going to give you a first-round pick next year. They give you an extra second-round pick or extra third-round pick. And remember, the Bucks already have three six-round picks, so they're going to be maneuvering, but they need players at the end of the day. So to answer your question, yes, you would be tempted to take a quarterback at 19, but there are far too many needs on this team at the end of the day that you have to fill in order to take that position. It's a luxury at this point. No way am I touching Will Levis. I think that is bust written all over it. I do not, I've do. i seen him play a few times. Not a fan of him. I would much more take the risk on Richardson than Will Levis. Wow. I think that's a total, total bust waiting to happen with Will Levis. I don't care if he's there at 19 or not. I'm not taking him. Um, again, Hendon Hooker is a guy that I would consider uh, later in the first round if you traded back into the first round type of situation, but – uh, I, I'm with you. I don't. I think if Richardson was there, you would take him at 19. But most likely, he's not going to be there. All I right. Off the quarterbacks there with Jalen Carter. Did you hear about him today? I mean, coming in, fat and overweight is at his workout. How do you do that? That is your job interview. How do you do that? How do you get into the trouble that you're getting into off the field? I get it. Kids will be kids, but come on, man. No, nah, that's bad. Oh, the biggest job interview, and you're overweight, and you can't do the drills, and you're out of. You're out of shape and you're you're breathing. I mean, come on, God, the Bears, flag. Just oh just think God. just think of this: the Bears could potentially get Jalen Carter at number nine, a guy who was potentially the number one pick in the draft a month ago. Could could potentially fall to number nine to the Bears, who would take him in a heartbeat at number nine. It's almost like history repeating itself, right? Because supposedly at the time Warren Sapp was dropping. And I heard this from Leo Haggerty, the legend himself, say that the Bears made up a rumor to get Warren Sapp to drop. Well, he didn't do all that. They made up those rumors to get him to drop. And, of course, he dropped into the Bucks' lap. And they were very fortunate. And, of course, Mike Mamula at the scouting combine. But he can't If you don't think Warren Sapp wasn't smoking some Chiba at Miami. Oh, he was smoking. <laughs> He was definitely smoking. He was smoking something. What it was, I mean, at the time, it wasn't just marijuana. It was It was also, was it cocaine, too? Allegedly. I, I don't know about the cocaine part, but I can promise you he yeah. was doing some weed. Right. Well, there was something being done, and it dropped. And now yeah. you see Jalen Carter, and they have this. 
I don't know if they had the same type of ability, but it's almost like a Daquan Bauer situation. Remember, yep. number one pick, and then all of a sudden he's in the second round. Didn't necessarily work out, but you got to take him. If, and the Bears, I mean, that would be the perfect scenario because they need a defensive tackle. They traded out, and they didn't think they were going to get Jalen Carter at nine. They get him at nine. That's great value. My problem is he's got a ton of red flags. He's not a very intelligent individual. I get it. He's young. Uh, but you got to think, young man. You got to do better than that. You got to get ready for the biggest job interview. It's like me and you going for a job interview with somebody. Let's say we wanted to work for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the night before we decide to go out to Ebor and get drunk and just hoot and holler and all these shenanigans, and we show up to the job interview drunk. It's just stupid at the end of the day. I'll get last topic and we'll be done. <laughs> yes, yes. If a if a month goes by, no activity. Do you make a do you make some kind of run at Lamar Jackson? I would. I mean, he's twenty six year old franchise quarterback. When does that? Uh, you got to find some money somewhere. If he's still out there in a month, you know, there's a lot of people saying, "Well, he's his own agent." Okay, go talk to them. Tell him that you're going to build around him. Tell him he got two talented wide receivers. Tell him he can live in the state of Florida. Tell him that you're committed to him, unlike the Ravens, where they're not going to pay a guy who's been there two seconds like Roquan Smith, $100 million. I mean, what a slap in the face to Jackson. And people don't talk about that, but they should be talking about that. I don't, I don't, think, it's a, I don't think he's getting a fully guaranteed contract. I think the genie's out of the bottle. I mean, and, and the owners are trying to put it back in the bottle, but this is going to come up again. Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes is going to be wanting another extension. There's a, well, no It's problem. the extension part's not the problem. It's guaranteeing all of it is the problem. I don't think anybody has a problem giving Burrow or Herbert $200 million guaranteed, but they're, if the contract's worth three fifty, they're not guaranteeing all three fifty of that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about all that money, but I, I certainly think you can make it work if you want to make it work. Uh, case in point, Deshaun Watson. Uh, Cleveland. Yeah, but Lamar Jackson has to want to make it work. That's the problem. There has to be some has to be some compromise. Listen. And I we've not heard anything now. I mean, to me, if you're Lamar Jackson, you're dumb for turning down a guaranteed three year, hundred and thirty five million dollars, and you'll and, and you'll be twenty nine years old to get another bag of he money. Want to be there. He doesn't want to be there. That's the reason. I I think he is absolutely just said enough. I'm done. I'm done with you guys. It's, Maybe. Um, uh, you know, it, not a repairable relationship with the Baltimore Ravens, and I think they really stepped into it. When they decided to pay a guy that's been there for two seconds, when you're supposedly have a franchise quarterback who you're supposed to build around, you should pay that guy first instead of Roquan Smith. To me, that's where that's where that relationship. But I don't think they guaranteed Roquan Smith. They, they guaranteed him about thirty million bucks. Well, I mean, still paid him, paid him before the franchise quarterback. I mean, that. I got you. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to think about it. That that's your guy. That's the guy that's your blood, uh, sweat, and tears, and everything else, and. You're not taking care of him first. Everybody else, he should be taken care of first. All right, Buck fans, we, we're, we're again, we're happy to report lots, several signings, which is a good thing. We weren't sure where the Bucks would be, how active they would be in the free agent market. So it's good that they're signing several of their own guys. Um, have not brought in a new guy other than Baker. Have not brought in anybody else from outside. But I think that'll happen. You'll see some value free agents coming up here in the next week or couple weeks. Uh, free agency. The Bucks won't be big, big fish hunting. I don't think in free agency. I think they'll wait till after the draft to do a couple other things, create a little more cap space. Probably look for Ryan Suckup to get released to save them a little more money. He right. may be a June first kind of guy that saves them a little more on the cap. I could see a couple other guys potentially being released down the road here. Um, we will, Buck fans. We will have a draft, a pre-draft episode for you of no quarter given. So um, you know, mid-April as we get a little more clarity on the roster and things like that. We'll have some more free agency news. Peter Blake, tell about all the great places you can be found. You're doing yeah. your great work. Oh, thank you very much, my friend. My tag team partner of the world, Mr. Jason Powers, right there. Powers on Sports Podcast. Yeah, you can find me on the Sports Web, uh, live on YouTube. Like and subscribe, of course, Monday and Wednesday nights at 9 o'clock on I Love St. Pete, Amped Up Sports, and, of course, The Hub. And do three things for me here on this free agency special and no quarter given on the Buck Power Podcast Network. Thank you very much, Paul Stewart. Once again, happy birthday. Bring your passion. Bring your excitement. Just don't bring any nonsense. I'm your host, Peter Blake, your Rolex reporter right there, Paul. As always, late. <laughs>
Peter, as we as we get ready for St. Patrick's Day this weekend, yes. don't be don't be rolling up and down West Shore. That's it. I don't want to see up Dale Mabry or West Shore. Those two streets are off limits to Peter Blake. We all know that you're my chaperone on that, Jason Powers. You're <laughs> the one that's driving the car and taking me to all these clubs and, and everything else. I'm trying not to end up like uh, John Morant there. That's right. Uh, with the Glock and, you know, having adult dancers. Uh, everybody's up in arms about that. Oh, my God. They're not up in arms about the Glock. They're up in arms about the adult dancer. So, yeah, that's your fault, Jason Powers. <laughs> you on that. You're a bad influence. We all know that. Who you, who you got in the Final Four? Who you got in your bracket? I don't even have a bracket. Oh my God, Peter Blake! I've been so focused. Come on, bro. Uh, I mean, who do you got? Who do you want? I got Arizona. Uh huh. I got Texas. Okay. I got Gonzaga. All right. And I got Duke. No Houston in there. No Houston. I think the, the, oh. there's some injury issues potentially. I think Texas is in the same bracket as Houston. I no think Alabama Texas either. You got the you got the killing spree going on in Tuscaloosa potentially. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're. I'm just kidding. I should. Oh, oh, oh. But, but check out the Powers on Sports podcast. I got a guest this week. We're going to talk all about it. Mike Grace from from the Birmingham area of Alabama. We're going to talk all about the Brandon Miller situation. Um, so yeah, check out Powers on Sports podcast on your favorite podcast platform. All the good thing. YouTube channel, Jason Powers Sports Channel. You can find this interview on there as well. So tell your friends about it. The YouTube channel. Go to Peter Blake's site. Again, uh, Buck Power TV also has a YouTube channel. You can see all some great uh, story content from Paul Stewart. And again, happy birthday, Paul. Hope you shot somewhere close to par. And Buck fans, we will see you real soon on the next edition of the No Quarter Given Podcast. Let's go. Hello. Have a good week, Buck fans. We'll see you soon.